This is not a full episode of Occult Unmasked. This is me responding to a few people here and there whose comments I've most likely deleted because my channel is not a platform for their lies. My channel is a platform for my truth. The easiest thing someone can say to me concerning me having an experience with a poltergeist in the year 2011, the easiest thing someone can say is that I'm a liar or that I'm crazy. I'm not a liar and I'm not crazy, but with all things supernatural, it's nearly impossible to prove. I fully recognize that, but there have been people that have told me here and there, oh, don't talk about that. Don't, don't talk about your experience. Don't talk about that. And then there are people that say that I'm claiming to be some authority on the paranormal, the supernatural, demons, and anything related to the spiritual and demons. I've never said I'm an authority on the subject. Ever. But I have a legitimate stake in the subject coming from the perspective of someone who legitimately lived in a room. I rented a room in the year 2011. I found it on Craigslist. It was a pretty cheap room. It was the cheapest one I could afford. It was between $400 and $500 a month. This was back in 2011, so I don't remember the exact amount. But I remember it was the cheapest I could find, and I had to move out of this other room from this other house. In this other house I was living at, my roommates, I had many roommates, they were college-age roommates, and it was a frat house type situation. And that wasn't even the worst part. The worst part was these frat house roommates that I lived with, we all had separate rooms, but we shared a house together, and they bought a new puppy. And the puppy was really cute, and I was like, you know, this is a big responsibility take care of the puppy. Don't forget to play with it. The worst thing you can do with a puppy is not play with it and not give it attention. Because what happens is the puppies, the puppy or cat, whatever it is, usually the cat or the puppy, they start ripping things to shreds. They start acting out if you don't give them proper attention. You have to play with them puppies and kittens. So this puppy wasn't played with. It was totally... These two guys, they had to work. They had to do things. So th they left the puppy alone in the house, in the backyard. And the puppy took a crap many times in the house. And I stepped on a pile of crap outside my door one too many times. It got to the point where the whole house was littered with dog poops. And it was an unlivable place. So I thought that was the worst of the worst. So I, I went on Craigslist and tried to find a place as cheap as this place. And to be honest, the poltergeist house was probably $100 more or $50 more. Both were very cheap. I thought, you know, I, I'm finally going to get out of this dog poop situation into a nicer place. Little did I know, I found literally the hellhole a vortex to the gates of hell themselves as I somehow picked literally the worst room on earth. Now, there's no way to know for sure if it was the room, but I can say this much. It didn't happen before, and it didn't happen after. Only the six months I lived in this one room. The only reason I didn't move out after noticing a poltergeist entity was living in my room, moving objects. Every single day, it would move at least 10 objects. Every single day for six months straight. This is a true story. I'm writing a book on it. The more people that tell me to don't talk about it, the more I will talk about it. The more people tell me, oh, shut up. You're a liar. You're not an authority on anything. This didn't happen to you. You didn't meet a demon. You're a liar. Blah, 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 blah. You just read it in a book, and you've been brainwashed. I didn't read it in a book. I've not been brainwashed. I'm not crazy. It's a true story. See, people that don't believe in 
the supernatural concerning spirit entities or non-physical entities or higher dimensional entities, they're dismissive. They automatically assume you're crazy or you're a liar. I'm not crazy. I'm not a liar. I'm going to talk about what happened to me extensively from A to Z, the full story in the future. The reason I haven't told the full story is because I'm writing a book. Now, I don't seek money, but I can tell you this much. When you write a pamphlet and Xerox it and hand someone that pamphlet, they're going to say, oh, thanks. They're going to throw it in the trash, like the, the leaflet hander outers in Las Vegas. If you walk down Las Vegas Boulevard, you'll be handed a piece of paper. Even if you're handed a book, even if someone on Las Vegas Boulevard hands you a book for free, they just hand that book to you. People are going to say, oh, thanks. And then two blocks later, they're going to dump it in the trash or throw it on the ground. I don't want my story dumped in the trash. I don't want my story thrown on the ground. So I am going to self-publish the book with my story of the poltergeist. I'm going to pay a great amount to get it bound in soft bound and hopefully hard bound because the story means a lot to me. It's probably going to be the only worthwhile thing I can do on this planet Earth, to be honest, is to tell my story, what happened to me. A lot of people say, oh, write, write in your journal. Tell future generations what happened to you. Well, this is what happened to me. It's an actual story. I was actually haunted by a poltergeist in the year 2011. I have the months written down. No one's going to believe it. Now, it's not sensational. It's not like the movie Poltergeist by Steven Spielberg. It's, it's, it's not levitating objects floating out of the place. It, it was more of an invisible creature that uh, could knock down water bottles, could knock down soda cans, could knock down light objects. It had a limit on what it could do. It had a favorite part of the room. It had a personality. I learned a lot. Uh, and someone asked me a really good question. Madam Katrina asked me what makes you think they are evil instead of just mischievous did you figure how they were attracted to you and did you really get rid of them and i did fully answer to the best of my ability but just to elaborate this entity that terrorized me for six months straight terrorized might be a overstatement but when you're trying to sleep after getting home from a long day's work and an invisible creature is trying to keep you up by knocking down objects in your room all night, I consider that a personal attack. I consider that terrorizing you. I had to buy a gigantic fan at a garage sale for $5. Luckily, across the street, an elderly couple had a garage sale on a Saturday. I would occasionally drive around the neighborhoods looking for garage sale deals and I found a huge Kmart old-fashioned I believe it's steel framed fan they don't make them like that anymore they're all plastic these days but it's a nice steel framed fan it's gigantic and it has three modes and I would put the mode to maximum I'm not one of those people that sleeps with a fan on I was one of those people that likes to sleep in dead silence. I can now manage to sleep with a fan on, but the white noise bothered me. I always liked dead silence, but now I can live with both. I can live with the fan on or the fan off. It doesn't bother me anymore because I'm so used to it because of this experience. I, I turned the fan to maximum. It would blow. This fan is loud. It's very loud. It goes, it's that loud. And I got a second pillow that I would put over my ear. And then I would put the covers over that ear sometimes. My head would stick, you know, be sticking out. I needed to breathe, but I would literally have a pillow over my ear and in the background. And even then, and this is not in my head, this is external objects actually moving. Even with me muffling out the sound, I would still hear things move. We're talking... 
I wouldn't always see what the object was because my eyes were closed and it was pitch black. But the thing was over the top, irritating me. And for six months, someone trying to get you to show up late for work. You know, I believe I did. I was about a half an hour late one day. Or perhaps close to one hour late one day. I'm never late. I had a perfect attendance record for two years straight. Except for this one late time. And I believe it was related to the poltergeist. But what am I going to tell my boss? Oh boss, uh, I'm late because of a poltergeist entity is haunting my room. I understand the response would be, yeah right, <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> but I'm not crazy. I'm telling the truth. And this clip on Dave Chappelle says it exactly as I would like to say it. This clip on Dave Chappelle exactly, succinctly describes my response to people calling me crazy. I am not crazy. You're calling me crazy so you can immediately dismiss me. It's the most lazy, it's the easiest, laziest way to say someone's wrong. Just, oh, you're crazy. Whatever comes out of your mouth, eh, it's, it's nonsense. Instead of actually analyzing, instead of actually taking the time to analyze someone's side of the story and actually see where they're coming from and why would they logically do this if it didn't happen, the media attacked Dave Chappelle. They said he was crazy. When he just wanted to get away from the atmosphere of greed... So I just love this quote from Dave Chappelle. I'm going to end on this quote. I thank you for watching. This has been John Rasmus with Occult Unmasked. Be seeing you. The worst thing to call somebody is crazy, is dismissive. I don't understand this person, so they're crazy. That's bullshit. These people are not crazy. They're strong people. Maybe the environment is a little sick.